common problem that some of us are facing is that we have a bunch of trucks and clients around the city. Now, how do we optimize the delivery route to be able to serve the clients the most efficient way? I have some good news for you because I have solved it. I've built a free Excel tool, you can download it, the link is in the description. What it will do is that it will take data automatically from Google Maps, such as time and distances between locations, and it will use an algorithm to solve it for you. Let's check it out. The first thing that we need to do is to fill the parameters, but before this, I just want to show you this menu, VRP Spreadsheet Solver. It has all the buttons to make running this tool super smooth. Now we go to the Google Maps API key. You need to go to this website and get an API key. Don't worry, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to do this. And Google will give you $300 of free API credits. So $300 is more than enough if you're trying this tool. It's virtually free. And after that, it will give you, I think, also some credits every month. If you are heavily relying on this tool and scheduling so many customers and deliveries, then you might want to look at Google Maps and see how much it will cost you to run this tool. Now, I already got a key and I have an instruction sheet. You can download it in the description. This key, you cannot see it. I put it in cell C3. Why? Because the color of the font of the cell is the same as the background. Otherwise, some of you will take the key, use it, and I'm going to end up on the streets with no money. Now, we start with the number of depots or warehouses. You can put from 1 to 20. The number of customers from 5 to 200. If you need more, you might go for a professional software, but I think for most of us, this is enough. Next, for distance computation, we're going to use Google Maps, so keep this as is, otherwise it's not going to work. Then we have number of vehicle types. This is not the number of vehicles. This is the type of vehicle. So for example, you have a type of vehicle that is refrigerated, and you have a vehicle for certain types of parcels, etc. In my case, I only have one type of vehicles, and I might have several vehicles. For the solution, do we return to the warehouse? Yes, at the end, you also have no, or you may do so multiple times. Then you have time window type. So you have hard or soft. What does it mean? Well, for example, a driver can drive nine hours a day as per contract. The car or the truck can be driven, for example, 10 hours a day. If you put hard, the solution will respect those conditions. If you put soft, if you go a little bit outside, it's okay. Then you have backholes. What does it mean? Well, if you activate backholes, you will go to the delivery locations first, and then you're going to go to the pickup locations. Because for example, if your truck is full, you cannot pick up a new item. There is no space for it. Finally, for the solver, we have warm start. I advise to keep this on yes, and CPU time limit. Here, for example, I have 60 seconds. So for 60 seconds, the algorithm will try solutions and find the best one. I think this is enough because it will try a lot of solutions. If you put more, you might risk a timeout and then your Excel will crash. Well, let's create this location worksheet. So I have this button. You can see we have one depot and five customers because we have one warehouse and five customers. I went and took some names and addresses from Dubai. So I'm just going to copy them. Control C, we go here and we paste them. So those are the names of the customers and those are the addresses. What you don't have is the latitude and longitude. If you know them, you can put them. If you don't, then you can just go here and populate lat long using addresses. This will use your Google Maps API key. So if you get an error, it means your API key has a problem. There we go, we get everything and you can see the locations on the map. You have some other parameters such as the time window. So for example, for this location, I can go from midnight till the end of the day, etc. You can change this. I usually don't. And here you have must be visited. So you can put don't visit, may be visited or must. I keep it as must. Then when you go to the location, you need to spend some time to give the parcel to the person. So you can put the time here. Be careful, this time is in days. So for example, if it takes me five minutes to serve this customer. I need to transform this into days. So five divided by 60, that will be number of hours. If I divide this by 24, it will be the number of days. 
and then I can put this for this location. So I'm just going to copy paste the values here and you will see it will take five minutes. You see it as five, but actually this is a formatting thing. So make sure that you transform everything into this. I showed you an example here. I'm just going to delete this. I don't need it. Then here, if you have a PNL, you can put how much money the customer will pay you, how much money you are delivering. So the parcel cost, and it will calculate a profit for you. Next, once we have all this, we need to go and populate the distance worksheet. By the way, there is another option I didn't show you. You can sort the locations alphabetically. It will sort actually the customers. Now we're going to go to this one. There we go, we will get this worksheet. What does it have? Well, it will take every combination of addresses or customers and it will give you here distance and duration. So for example, we have Biba with the depot, Biba with herself, with this customer and so on. And what we need is to calculate the distance and the duration between every combination. If you know it, you can also put it. If you don't, you just go here and use your API key. After a few seconds, you have everything populated. So here you have from to, you have how many kilometers, for example, 21 kilometers, etc. You have the durations and you can see it in minutes. So this is 23 minutes, 0.95. Here, this is the same duration, but it is in days. The formatting shows you 23 minutes, but actually it is in days. And this is the one you need to use for the algorithm. So I'll give you another example. Here we have 23.9 minutes. So if I want to put it here, I have to take this, divide it by 60 to make it in hours and 24 to make it in days. So I'm going to get 0.01 day. I go here, control C, and I can paste it, alt ESV, which is the values. So you will see it as 23 minutes, but if you go up, you will see midnight, 23 minutes and 57 seconds. So just be careful because if you put, for example, 23 here, it will take it as 23 days, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to delete this again and we move on. We finish the distance. Now we need to go for vehicles. So set up vehicles worksheet. Here I had one type of vehicle. So this is T1. You can change the name and I need to define the parameters for this type of vehicles. First thing is the capacity. So here I have one. I'm just going to keep it as one. Those are the financials. So a fixed cost per trip, cost per unit distance, so cost per kilometer. I'm just going to put zero. Duration multiplier, you have one here. And this is the important part. So here, how many kilometers can I drive? 560, that's my max. Work time, I start at 8 a.m. So you can see it here. If you want to change, for example, nine, you do it like this. That's the best way. Then driving time limit, I cannot drive more than nine hours. Again, you need to change it here. Don't just type it nine like this or eight, for example, because you might have a problem. You can see here, it gave me a number that I don't want to see. So I just change it up. Then this is how many hours the driver can work. So we have 10. And where do we go? We go back to our depot. If you have more than one warehouse, you would have more choices. How many vehicles of this type I have? I'm just going to put two. Next, we need to set up the compatibility worksheet. So here I have one type of vehicles. Is it compatible with the package I need to give to Biba, for example? So you have compatible and incompatible. So if you have, for example, two types and the package of Biba is refrigerated, for example, you might select incompatible for T1. It will make sure that the vehicle of type T1 will never go to deliver to Biba Otherwise, the package will reach in a bad state. In my case, I'm going to put everything compatible. Next, I need to set up the solution worksheet. So we have here two vehicles, vehicle one and vehicle two, because I define them here. Those two vehicles are from the same type. Perfect. Now, I can play with this manually. Obviously, there is a solver. We're going to see it in a bit. But if I want to see, for example, I start at the depot here with vehicle one, I can go to visit the first customer, five kilometers, 11 minutes. So if I start at 8 a.m., I will reach at 8, 11. I need to serve this customer for five minutes, if you remember. So we went here, for example, we had five minutes. So if you see, 
now it's 8 16 this is when i'm going to depart from biba i can go visit somebody else for example john and i'm going to arrive at john's place at 8 39 and so on so you can see all these things and you can see whether your solution is good or not play with it and so on but obviously we want to use the solver so here i'm going to use the solver it's going to iterate for around 60 seconds you're going to feel that your excel is static so if you click somewhere nothing happens so just be patient a few moments later there we go we have tried more than 140,000 solutions and there is a solution do i want to see it i'm just gonna put yes and there we go first we visit rana then john then rami biba mark and Depot. and what will happen we're gonna start at 8 and finish at 9 54 a.m perfect and you can see that i can do everything with one vehicle so the second vehicle has nothing i just keep it in the depot now we can check the feasibility of this solution if you want to and that's important if for example you are doing a manual solution but let's check in this case the solution is feasible so there is no reason for me not to go with this solution now how do we get a google maps api key and what are the things to enable so i have this sheet with instructions again you can download it from the link in the description those are the steps in summary and here i have the detailed steps so first of all, I need to go to this website. I'm just going to copy it. Control C escape. Let's go here and paste it. I already have an account, so I'm going to be logged in automatically. But for you, you just need to use a Gmail and you can get an account. This is pretty easy. The next thing that we need to do is create a project. So how do we do this? Well, if we just go back, we go here. And we can see I have already a project, but here you can see new project. So we click on it. This is a name. You can give it a name and you need to select a location. Now I created one called no organization. You need to browse. You need to create this. Once you do it, there is this button create. So you click on it and you have a new project. Once we have a new project, we go here and we can select it. This is the name of my new project. I am inside the project. What do I do next? Once I create a project, I need to enable billing for the project. So I need a billing account. You will need to use a credit card. It will not take money from you because you have 300 of free credit. But this is to make sure that you are a human. So how do we create this billing account? Let's go back. And here you go on the side after selecting the project. You have billing. You can see what has been used, etc. And what you can do is go here, manage billing accounts. So for you, you didn't have a billing account, obviously. For me, this is my billing account. I'm going to create a new one. So you have create account. This is the name of the account. You can select the country. You continue. And here you need to fill all these details and put your credit card. Once you do this, you need to submit and enable billing. There will be a verification step where they will take around a dollar from your credit card. You will put this amount and then you can verify yourself. I'm not going to do this because I already have a billing account. So if I go here back to my billing accounts, this is the one I have. I can go to my project and make sure that this project has the same billing account. So in case you don't see anything, for example, I'm just going to disable billing. You will see that I don't have a billing account. I can go here, change billing account, select one from the drop down menu. I have this one. So I'm going to set it. And there we go, we have a billing account for this project. Next, we need to enable three APIs. The first one is called Distance Matrix API. So how do we do this? Well, we can just go here, API and Services. You have Library. And by the way, everything I'm doing, you can search for it up and you'll find it. So here, I'm just going to go back, Library. In my library, I can search for my first API. So distance matrix API, you have it here. You can just click on it and you need to select the project. Here you can enable it. Once you enable it, you're going to get your API key. There we go. I'm just going to copy paste the API key. I'm going to put it here, for example. After that, before I can go for the other APIs, it's going to ask me for API restrictions. You can see this is step number six. So I'm just going to show you. Go to Google Maps platform and you can see here you have $200 monthly API credits. This is after the 300. I guess they give you 200 per month. 
So here are the restrictions. This will help you in case somebody seals the key. So you can restrict all of these things. I'm not going to do it for now. You can check it out yourself. And here, now I have my first API enabled. I need to enable the other ones. So the second one, if you go here, is called Geocoding API. So we go here, Geocoding, for example, this is the API. It's under my project. We can enable it. And there is a third one, which is called Static Maps. So we'll go here. Maps Static. We search for it. Map Static API. This is the one that will draw the map. So we enable it. If we go back here, what has happened? We have set up the billing account. We have created the project, the API key, and we have enabled the right APIs. This is the restriction part. Now it's time to test your API key. So here, what do we have? We have some links and we need to check whether it works or not. So what I'm gonna do is take this, Control C, we put it here, and we just take the API key that we have, Control C, Escape, and we put it instead of key. So here you have your API key, you paste it, and you press Enter. You will get a link, you can also copy paste it. I'm just gonna click on it. And here I have to get something like this, where the status is okay and I'm getting something. This means that my API key is working. You can also test it for the second one. So this is the distance matrix. You have also the geocoding API. You can test it for geocoding. I didn't put a test for the third one, which is the static maps, because if it works for those two, I'm sure it's gonna work for the static maps. You just need to enable the static maps. So once you do those two tests, you can just take your API key and put it in the tool and then it's gonna work.